Good morning, I'm Aaron Heiser, Makers Leather Supply, and uh, in this video we are going to build the, uh, the long-awaited trifold wallet. Um, this is a very rough one, I didn't do the edges or anything on it yesterday, I, uh, I just got it all put together, but this is what we're going to build in today's video, but we'll build a much prettier version, we'll, uh, we'll make sure it's hand-stitched and stitched right, and anyway, this is the prototype. So, um, you've got a big long cash pocket, goes the entire length of the wallet. You have two little uh, pockets under these two cards, and then this this uh, template set is actually going to come in two variations. One of them is only going to have six cards, so it would be two two cards per uh, section there. And then this one that we're going to build in today's video holds nine cards, or has nine card slots. You can stuff more in there, but anyway. Um, so yeah, this we're going to build the nine card slot version. And um, this is it. So um, I'm going to put the camera where you can see what I'm doing. Again, this is another one of our uh, template sets. This is our newest one. I just uh, just built the template set yesterday. And um, yeah, I've, uh, I've, I took a long time on these patterns. People have been asking and asking and asking for a, a uh, template set for a trifold wallet for well, since I started making wallet templates, and I um, I didn't have a pattern I liked, so I wasn't about to mass produce it and send it out to other people and tell them it was the greatest thing since sliced bread when it wasn't. So, after lots of work, lots of uh, going through and, and different doing it different ways, I found a way that works really, really well. And uh, it makes a great wallet. It makes a beautiful wallet. It makes a wallet that's not going to be crazy thick in the pocket. Um, it's not too big as far as its um, actual outside dimensions. Anyway, let's get started. Um, just like all the other template sets, um, all of our templates are made out of an eighth inch blue acrylic. Um, we like blue, so they're all blue. Um, anyway, again, I, I have the nine card variation and the six card variation. In this video, we're just going to make the nine, and that's the one that's in front of me here. Um, this uh, template set is four different pieces, all right, and I'll explain these pieces. This is the outside piece of the wallet, the wallet back, the part you're going to tool or use some sort of exotic or something to make, all right. Then you have your divider piece, just like in our billfold, the divider piece is the one that's right here in the middle and all of the other card pockets are sewn to it. And then you have your card pocket pieces. Um, this one you'll actually cut two out of, and then this one you'll cut one out of. It's the middle one. So I don't want to get into too much of that because we're going to do it all right now. So um, let me get my back piece here. Um, the back piece says on it, uh, nine card trifold wallet, piece one out of four, which is the wallet back, uh, cut one out of four to five ounce leather. What I have here is um, some four to five ounce English bridle uh, that we sell here at Maker's Leather Supply. And um, I just love this. If I'm not going to tool a wallet, this is what I make it out of. Um, I, uh, it's really nice leather. It's, it's got a really nice feel to it. Um, it's good stuff. Probably should have changed my blade out before I started this. So, um, just like the others, uh, it really is best to use a scalpel so that you can get right up to the edge of the um, the templates on these bigger pieces. And then on the, the card pause kits and things like that, you'll have to have a scalpel because that's the only blade that will fit through the uh, slots. All right, now I am going to apologize ahead of time. Um, it's been a while since I've made a video. Um, there may be some things that get repeated that were on my other videos, and that's okay. But um, more importantly, I still have not learned how to use video editing software, so we're going to have to pause the camera once in a while when I'm doing a long process that uh, I don't, you don't want to have to sit there and stare at it the whole time. 
definitely about to change the blade in this skill. this sort of thing out. Template back where it was in the first place. There we go. I'm starting to think I didn't know what I was doing here. All right, so that's my wallet back. It is the only piece I'm gonna cut out of this particular color. Um, the rest of the pieces, I actually, it's uh, it's still English bridal leather, but I wanted to make them out of this nice pretty tan piece. Um, we'll have a really cool contrast between the outside and the inside of the wallet. And um, I think that'll look really nice with some uh, cream colored uh, hand stitching. All right, so we are going to cut out these other pieces right quick. Um, I'm not sure that I've got enough leather cut here, but I think I do. So, yep, okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out just the exterior of all these pieces, and then we'll go back and uh, we'll do the card slot parts. So what I'm gonna do is I'll, uh, I'll pause the video so that this doesn't turn into a three hour video here. And um, I will come right back to you once I have these other uh, four rectangles cut out. Okay, so um, while the video was paused, I went ahead and cut out all my pieces. All right, so I now have one, two, three. Four interior pieces, all cut out of two to three ounce um, leather. Um, when you talk about the kind of leathers you can use for this, um, veg tan works really, really well. This is English Bridal, which is also a, a veg tan that's been taken a step further in the tanning process. Um, but you can use any leather that's going to be nice and thin, like two ounces, that's nice and rigid because you don't want it getting all wadded up in the wallet. I mean, it needs to be able to uh, maintain its... Uh, its shape and everything. So if you're trying to use really, really soft leather, it's it's going to cause a problem. Um, but uh, I know a lot of people use the the mission grain pig skin and that stuff. So it's great as far as uh, you know how it holds up and everything. But I just it has white edges and sometimes that's hard to get rid of. So I I don't use it very much. All right, a um, couple of notes here. I I I, I need to go back and talk a little bit for anybody that hadn't seen any of our other videos or used any of our other templates when cutting out these card pieces right here all right the instructions on this on this one say um it's number three of four left and right pockets cut one then flip it over and cut another one so we're gonna we cut it this way and then we're gonna use the back side of it and cut another one where the card pockets are on the opposite side then the other thing is this giant square right here, rectangle right here, says do not cut out. To mark our tape lines, turn the leather over to place the top of the rectangle at each cut line and make a mark along the bottom of the rectangle. So after we have these card slots cut out, I will show you what that means. But it's very important when you're cutting it out not to cut out the giant rectangle out of these pieces. Please. So, um... So to cut out our card pockets, um, the reason that these holes are at the ends of each of these lines is to give it kind of a stopping point. Um, if those lines were just regular old slit cut lines, then the leather actually would have kind of a, um, the ability to tear there. 
um, but it's it's much less likely to happen because of the uh, the holes that we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this little hole punch. Um, we now sell a, uh, a hole punch set that um, has small enough punches that will go into these holes, okay? And I get a lot of folks call me and they say, oh, I cracked my template. Well, I, if just the tip of it fits in there, that's not good enough. It needs to be able to go all the way through there so that it'll get through the leather too without putting a lot of pressure on your template. I mean, these things are very well made. You can drop them, you can throw them across the room, but you try to shove something large in there and then give it a hit with your maul and it's going to crack the template. So I'm going to set it up here and I need to reach behind me and grab a maul right quick. Here we are. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and punch out these six holes. If you uh, have the uh, six slot version, then it's only four holes because there's only three cards or two card slots per section. All right, so I have punched out all those holes and I'm going to hold this, this template very still. I'm going to take my scalpel and I'm going to run the scalpel blade between the holes. And I'm going to make dang sure that I cut from hole to hole. You don't want to leave uncut uh, space in there because then you just won't have a good cut. So there we have it. And those cuts are now individually done. Um, we will set this one to the side because uh, we need to do the other one. And again, this uh, this says you cut one, flip it over, and cut another one. So um, all of these are actually backed with paper. And you can take the paper off. So that you can see through it. Um, the only reason I leave the paper on them is so that they don't get damaged in shipping. I don't want them to show up to you all nice and scratched up and everything, and then you have a product that's not new and shiny and pretty. So, we flipped it over, we've put it back up against our leather, and we're going to go through the same process. We're going to punch the holes, cut the slots. Again, it's very important that we hold the template on there very still so that it doesn't move and we don't get all of our, our slots misaligned. The more careful you can be with every single step, then the better your finished product is going to be. Um, I tell a lot of people when they come here and take classes and stuff that, uh, you know, one little detail doesn't make much difference. But when you put together all the little details then it makes a huge difference and the overall project is going to be much nicer all right last piece we're going to do it one more time there's only one of these so you do it this way the leather looks a little nicer Again, all these, all three of these pieces are two to three ounce. I'm using an English bridal um, tan for the interior. Uh, it's really nice stuff. Scalpel got cut a hole in my cutting board. I've had these cutting boards for about 15 years, and it's about time to retire them and find some new ones. All right, successful cuts.
So now I'm going to show you what that little rectangle was all about. Get all this stuff out of my way and get all the little hole cutouts out. So now I'm going to show you what the little rectangle is all about. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a pen. I turn my leather over, okay? Finished side, unfinished side. I want the unfinished side up. And I'm going to take this rectangle and I'm going to put the top of the right rectangle long ways right at the very bottom uh, cut line. Okay, and I'm not doing it directly over the cut line. I'm doing it off to the side a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark a little line with my pen. Don't draw on it really hard because you don't want this, 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 the impression to show up on the finished side of your leather. But you do need to make a mark. Okay, and then you'll move it up and you'll do the other, the same thing with the other two lines. And what it is, is when we start um, building the inside of this in just a second, um, we're going to use a lot of double-sided tape and a product called, I use Tyvek, but we'll talk about that. Um, anyway, and uh, we need to be able to see these lines um, as we're, we're uh, running the material that holds the cards in. Okay, I did that one. Now I got to do the other two right quick. I am uh, overwhelmed at the response that we've had to the templates we make. Um, I mean, we've really had a lot of folks let us know the, um, how much they like them and how easily they've they've made making wallets. You know, I mean. Uh, I've even had people say, you know, they were scared to do anything other than kits, and then they watched one of our videos, and they, they really liked it, and uh, now they feel like they can branch out and make uh, make things. So that being said, if you wanted to leave a comment on anything you'd like a video on making, I'd, I'd be more than happy to um, try to do these things. I, I really do enjoy making these videos, but I'm one of those, I'm like, well, they're tired of hearing me talk for a while, I'll Tell you what, I'm going to do this on this larger side over here so I can make a bigger line off to the side. I've often wondered if I'd learned how to use my video editing software that's on my computer. Maybe I uh, do these videos like more like Don Gonzalez and make it to where I'm actually not talking during the live video, but then I'm doing a voiceover and telling the important stuff later, and that way I can speed up some of these processes. But again, I'm an idiot, and I don't know how to use video editing software. <laughs> okay, so um, just like in the other two wallet builds, we're going to use... Um, a material and we're going to run it back and forth between these lines and it's going to build our card pocket card pockets so that when you put a card in there it doesn't just slide all the way down to the bottom of the wallet so um, a lot of people use different things um, to run back and forth uh, some people use fabric some people use ribbon um, some people will, uh, I've, I knew one guy just used paper. I, I don't think it would last too long in a, in a wallet because your wallet gets all sweaty with your pants pocket and all. But anyway, at least mine does. Um, I, uh, in the other videos, um, I used a, a product called Tyvek. Um, it's the same stuff that uh, like contractors use to wrap buildings and houses and stuff like that. But when I was making the videos, I couldn't, I didn't have a good resource to find it in black. Uh, normally it comes in white, and sometimes it even has writing all over it. That can be kind of annoying. Um, so since then, though, I have found where I can buy big rolls of it in, uh, in black, and then I cut the rolls down um, to the widths that we need to, uh, to do our different kinds of wallets that we have. Um, we sell a wider one, which is for the billfold and the, uh, the biker wallet uh, kits. Uh, as well as the passport wallet, I guess. And then this is the narrow one. It all it works on the really well with the Rover wallet, and it's going to work really well with the the uh, the, the trifold wallets. 
Um, you're going to need about 64, 63 inches or so to do this, uh, this entire wallet here. And then also we use um, double-sided tape. Um, I've got mine right here in uh, my Dave Swallow little stitch and pony as a dispenser. It just makes it easier. I am going to need 21 pieces of this tape to build this entire wallet, okay? 21 pieces of that stuff right there. And I'm going to cut each of them approximately the length of the card slot, okay? Where we did those cuts, that's how wide the tape needs to be, or how long each piece needs to be. You don't actually want it to be longer than that, but it's okay to be a little bit shorter, but you need to get it as accurately, as close to that width as possible. Um, I've cut a lot of these, so usually I can get it pretty close just by eyeballing it. So there we are. That was actually, wow, I couldn't have, I got really lucky to do that on camera. So anyway, um, I need 21 of these and it's going to take me a minute. So I'm going to pause the video. And, um, as I cut them, I just set them over on the edge of the bench over on the side. Not, not no normally right here, but you, it's hard to see, but that tape is right there. And I just kind of corner it right there on the bench so that it's ready for me to grab when it's a, that piece of tape's turn. Um, if you, if you, uh, put it flat on the bench, then you risk it, uh, sticking to the bench and, um, then you may not get it off. Um, we sell this double-sided tape. It is extremely sticky. It's way better than what you'll find in your local uh, hobby store, um, Hobby Lobby, or anything like that. And um, I've been using this exact kind of tape to build these wallets for about nine years, and I have not had one of these wallets fail on me yet. So I, uh, I believe wholeheartedly in this product. Um, and it comes in 60 yard rolls. So, I mean, a roll will last you a lot of wallets. Anyway, I'm going to pause the video and cut out all this tape. Okay, I have my uh, all my pieces of Tyvek um, cut out. Uh, or, sorry, my tape. And um, I, I kind of talked about the Tyvek, but I didn't talk about actually why I choose Tyvek over the other stuff. Um, it's super duper thin and... Um, Therefore, it, uh, it doesn't cause bulk inside your wallet, like the Roper wallet. In the center of the Roper wallet, there's 12 layers of this right there in the middle of it. And 12 layers of this is about the same thickness as like two sheets of paper. But 12 layers of fabric is an eighth of an inch thick. 12 layers of ribbon is actually even thicker than that. So, oh, wow. Sorry about that. Okay, um, I kicked the uh, tripod under the desk there. So um, anyway, but that's why I like the Tyvek is because it, it, um, it's really thick and then also it folds really, really nicely. Like you can put a really nice crease in Tyvek and have some really sharp card po pockets that uh, are uh, dead accurate that you don't have to worry about the cards being at different levels and things like that. So. Um, get my tape out of the way. I don't need it. Um, the big roll at least. So we need to set up these pieces for, um, for, 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 for starting the Tyvek. All right. Um, each of these sections will take seven pieces of tape. Um, if you're making the, uh, the six card version, each of the sections would take five pieces of tape. So it needs 15 instead of 21. Um, First thing you're going to do is you take one piece of tape and put directly beneath each of these cut lines here. And I mean like directly be beneath it. You don't want it hanging over it, but you also don't want it a quarter of an inch below the line. You want it directly beneath it. Set it down there, and then I stick it on good, and then I move on to the next piece. All right. So I, there's um, there's one directly beneath each cut. Now I'm going to take one more piece. I'm going to put it directly above the bottom line, 
And even though these lines are off to the side a little bit, I'm going to center it between these holes. You know, like if there were lines going straight down, and it's going to go directly above the bottom line. Okay, and then I'm going to take one more piece. And I'm going to put it anywhere between the top line, top cut and the top of the project. Um, but it's going to be closer to the top of the cut because I don't want it to get it into my sewing line. So I'll put it about right there. So just above the top cut. All right. Now I've got to do that on two more pieces. So, um, uh, again, if you're building along with the video, one just below each of the cut lines. One just above the very bottom drawn line. And one above the top cut line. And then we'll do it a third time on the third piece. This one's kind of long, so I'm going to put it down here at the bottom instead of at the top. So I don't want it to stick out through those two holes that we punched. All right, so I did three below the cuts, one above the line. Now I need to do one up here at the top. And now we are ready to run our Tyvek, okay? Um, it's, it's something that the first couple of times it's very, um, I don't want to say difficult to do, but it, it can get confusing and everything. I had to write a letter for the, or a, an article for the Leather Crafters and Saddlers Journal on making one of our wallets. I didn't have to, I wanted to. Um, anyway, and what I'm about to show you, I had to describe in only words and pictures and man, making a video is so much easier. Um, I, uh, I am not, um, I, I was not prepared to, to have to write all that out and, and try to explain what I was doing. Um, even with the, putting the tape down was difficult to describe where, where on the lines and all that stuff. So anyway. All right, so the first thing I do is I'll start with my Tyvek up above my project here. Okay, this is the top of the card pocket, so these are the drawn lines down here. All right, and I'm going to take the paper off of the back of that very bottom cut line. Okay, and then I'm simply going to take my Tyvek. I need to make sure that it runs perfectly straight and in a line with the card pockets, and I'm just going to lay it right across there. and then I'm gonna press it down, okay? Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it back and I'm gonna pull it kind of tight up against the, uh, the double-sided tape, okay? You don't wanna pull it too hard. You're not trying to pull any of the tape down. You just want it pulled up against that tape line, all right? And I'm gonna create a crease right there. It's very important every time we make one of these creases and stuff to keep it right you know to where when it goes back and forth it's going to go over this you don't want it stair stepping off to the side to the left or the right okay um so anyway i, I pulled it down i created a crease now i'm going to take that bottom piece of uh of tape i'm going to pay, take the paper off of the back of it and i'm just going to run that tyvek right across that tape and i'm going to press it down all right so the next thing i'll do is fold it back again I'm going to fold it right on that line, okay, because that is where I want the bottom of my card pocket. If that's exactly, if that line was drawn in the correct position and I fold the tape directly on the line, then when I am, when a card is put in this pocket, the top of the card will be exactly even with the next pocket. So that's, that's why it's kind of important to try to stay with your lines. 
So I bent it back and I have um, I've made my, my little crease. I'll pull it back off to the side here and I will take off the second, the middle card pocket, I'll take the paper off. So there's my exposed double-sided tape and I'm just gonna take it and right there on the tape. Rub it on there real good, make sure it's got a good adhesion. And then I'm gonna fold it down again, pull it just kinda of even with the tape. Create my crease. And then this is where we've got six extra pieces of tape that we didn't use uh, hanging off our bench here. This is where you need those. So the first P, or uh, what we're gonna do is, right here we drew that little line right off to the side. Um, that second line, the middle line there, we had drawn that one off to the side on purpose because we wanna put this piece of tape directly above where that line is. Okay, so you center it on your Tyvek and you put it directly above where that line is. All right, and then I'm going to pull the, uh, the back of the tape off to expose it. And I'm gonna pull that Tyvek right down across that line. So on the subsequent layers, it, it lays on top of itself and not directly against the leather on the bottom parts. That's why we uh, that's why we had to draw those lines. That's why we have extra tape out here. Okay, I'm gonna pull it back up. I'm gonna pull it even with that line again and create another crease. And then I'm gonna fold it or uh, pull it back a little bit so I can grab the uh, the tape on the top cut line, okay? So the second piece of the tape from the top, it's the, the one that's on the cut line there. And I'm gonna lay this right across it. So there we are. We're gonna pull it down and tight again. Create our crease. And we're going to take our last piece of tape for that section and we're going to put it directly above that top line that we drew in there. Okay, right on the back of the Tyvek again. Or ribbon or fabric, whatever you're using. There we go. All right, so I ran the, the, the Tyvek back across that piece of tape. I'm going to pull it back up and create a crease right even with that line again. And then I'm going to pull off this top piece up here, and this is where our, our Tyvek is going to just stop and be done. All right, so I'm going to run this up to it. And then I'm just going to cut off my remaining Tyvek right there at that line. Doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be cut off. Um, and again, I don't want the Tyvek to go up all the way to that line, that the, the top of the piece there, because I don't want it in my seam. Once I've uh, folded this in half and sewn it, I don't want this in where I'm trying to burnish my edge later. Okay? Okay, so that is one card pocket. All right, now when I put a card in here, When I put a card in here, it will stop right where it's supposed to, just at the next line. Okay? Okay, now, what stinks is that's one of three. We got to do two more. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me do it, so we're going to uh, pause the video. And we're going to do this two more times. And when I come back, all three of these pieces will be complete. All right. So we now have three completed P, uh, sections for card pockets. All right. So there was uh, the middle one right there. This one will be on the right side. This one will be on the left side. Okay. Now, what we have to do is we are going to, these two longer ones, 
we have to fold them in half and sew them together. Okay, so let me grab my glue. It's all the way across the room. Give me a second. So here's my contact cement, and now I need a piece of paper. So there we go. Now I have my contact cement and a piece of paper so I don't get glue on my, my nice cutting surface here. Um, I'm going to first fold this in half, perfectly align the edges, and create kind of a crease in the leather so that once I go to glue it, it won't be as difficult to, uh, to fold in half, and I'll know where the crease is already. So I'm just going to run my fingers across it there. I'll grab my little rolly tool. Um, people in the in the videos have asked about this little rolly tool. Um, I bought this from Tandy some years ago. I don't know if they still sell them or not. It's it's got a really that's solid metal on the end, so it's really heavy, but it helps with things like this, and uh, and um, putting two pieces of glued something together, you know, and rolling it on it and everything. Anyway, I, again, I don't know if Tandy still sells them, but it's a uh, I found out later it's a wallpaper roller. You can get one of these at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. You may not always find them with the metal head on them, but a lot of the time they'll have like a, a nylon head. And honestly, that's just as good for what you need. It's just a little rolling pin to help you create a crease like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold that one and then I'll fold this one and then I will glue the edges of them with our contact cements so that they will hold uh, together. And then I'm going to hand stitch this entire wallet. Um, I have one, two, three, four, six sewing machines right here in the room with me. But on all the videos, um, except for one so far, I have hand stitched because I want the folks that are, are potentially wanting to make a wallet like this to know that you don't have to have a sewing machine. Yes, it helps. Yes, it can be faster. But there is nothing wrong at all with a finely hand stitched wallet. I actually, even though I deal uh, sewing machines and everything, um, now that I'm not doing leather work uh, as a living and I'm doing, you know, Maker's Leather Supply and supplies and stuff, I um, I prefer hand stitching. I just, I really enjoy it. I'll turn on a movie and I'll sit there with my little stitching pony and, and um, yeah, it's, it's my nice coffee drinking, pipe smoking, quiet time. So I'm going to put some uh, contact cement on this, I'm going to make sure it goes all the way out to the edge so that that'll help us um, have a nice clean edge later. But I'm going to make dang sure that it doesn't get into the Tyvek. You don't want your glue um, getting into your Tyvek because then you might accidentally uh, glue a card bucket shut or something like that. So you got to be a little bit careful that your glue doesn't get into your Tyvek. I'll put it on one side and then on the other. And I'm just going right around that edge there so that this will stick together really well for me when I go to sew it. Doesn't take a lot of glue at all. Um, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, this entire perimeter will be sewn. So we're not trying to create um, such a permanent bond that like it would have to hold itself. I mean, the, the sewing is what's going to hold it. The glue is just going to get it there while we sew. Um, so there's one. Let me do another one. And then the centerpiece, um, we're not, it doesn't have to be sewn right now. Um, the, the one that doesn't get folded in half, um, we'll, we'll do it in a little bit and show you what we're going to do with it. One side, we'll do the other side, and I'm having to move it around on my paper to make sure I don't get glue on the finished side of my leather here. But by folding this and gluing it, we're uh, 
or folding and stitching this, we're uh, creating those side pockets so that there'll be extra storage space behind these cards in the wallet. Folks that carry a lot of stuff in their wallet really appreciate it. Um, otherwise, we could have just made three of the ones that don't fold and sewn them all to the liner and then gone to town with that. But again, it doesn't hold a lot of stuff then. And uh, we're trying to make a wallet. The, the, when making custom wallets for folks, the, 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 the hard thing is always trying to make the thinnest wallet you can that will hold as much as it can. Um, unless, of course, there's some sort of, you know, doing the minimalist thing and they only carry like two cards and some cash on them, which I can totally um, be jealous of that. But um, anyway, so this one is the first one that I put the glue on. Uh, the glue is ready to be uh, set because our contact cement sets pretty quickly. So I'm just going to, once again, fold it in half and make sure my corners are perfectly aligned here and then press down the sides of it. And then I'll use my little rolly tool again, and I'll get a good bond on this glue so that I can hand sew what I need to sew. Sorry about the squeak. Hope that's not too bad on your headphones or whatever you're listening to this with. Um, I have one guy comment on one of my videos that um, when I whistle, because sometimes I whistle when it's just too quiet, um, that uh, it was just blowing his eardrums out with his headphones, so I didn't realize my whistling was so loud. Anyway, so now I have a radio playing in the background so I don't hear the deathly silence and um, I don't have to whistle. All right, so they're both glued. I used my rolly tool on both of them. Now we're gonna sew, okay? What we need to sew down is that edge right there. That is the folded edge. That's not the glued edge, it's the folded edge. Okay, so we're gonna just sew right down that edge right there on both of these. So we'll sew down this one and we'll sew down that one. All right. Um, I will um, show you what I do to, to get this ready to sew and everything, but then I'm gonna do most of the work off camera because you shouldn't have to sit there and watch me. Um, this is my uh, pricking irons. Those are eight stitches per inch, which is my favorite size to use with just about everything, mostly wallets though. All right, this is my uh, Barry King um, stitching groover. And um, I'm gonna run just a really light, very light groove because this is thin leather. I don't want to groove too deep in it. I'm gonna run a very light groove down both of these. That was probably too light. Let me hit that twice. All right, now we got something we can sew in. All right, then we'll do the same thing over here. Um, using a stitch groover really is an option. You don't have to use one. I didn't use one for years, but as my stitching got better, I learned that that was one thing I could do to improve the look of my stitches. You use a groover and they seem to lay in that channel a little bit flatter and straighter and nicer. Um, I'm using my pricking irons. Technically, pricking irons are just for marking where your holes will be and then going back behind them and using an awl to sew it. Um, this is like three and a half ounces of leather and I'm going all the way through the leather. That's why I've got this nice rubber pad here. It doesn't damage the pricking irons. Now when I sew this, <clears throat> I don't go all the way to the edge with it because that edge is going to be sewn down to something too. So I start just maybe just under a quarter of an inch, I guess, from the, uh, the, the bottom edge and I run it to the same distance from the top edge.
All right, so there's one. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, get the holes in my other one too, so it saves time to not have to keep picking up and putting down the same tool. I actually, my hand sewing thread and needles are over there on the other table. I'll run over there and grab those right quick. I'll grab my uh, little stitching pony back and uh, I'll show you a few stitches and then I'll go off camera. Dave Swallow Stitching Pony. I'm going to stand up for this part and I'm going to bring the camera up so that everybody can see what we're doing here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put one of these in my stitching clamp. Um, Dave Swallow of Roll Up Texas made this uh, little stitching pony, stitching clamp thing, and I love this little thing. I have a big stitching horse that I use for most of my hand stitching, but this little thing is awful convenient when I'm trying to do something on camera or uh, just have a small project, you know, when I'm doing a watch band or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull off, I don't know, arm's length plus a little bit of this thread. This is our uh, Maker's Leather Supply brand um, hand sewing thread. It's, it's really good stuff. This is the 0.8 millimeter size, and then this is cream colored. Um, I don't like using white thread. To me, it just it's way too bright for the project, no matter what the project is. Um, so I always use like a natural or a cream color or something like that in place of white. So it'll still have a really nice contrast to it. It'll still be, um, um, you know, it'll still look really good, but it's not white. So it won't look like it glows on my, my uh, medium brown uh, backing there, the wallet back. All right. I'm going to start at the hole that's closest to me, which means I need to move this down in the clamp a little bit. When you're when you're when you're hand stitching when you're saddle uh, stitching leather you always uh, start on the finished side and put that needle in first. Okay, and the finished side is what's going to be on the outside. It's where my cards actually are. The rest of it's in the back. Um, you know, it's inside a pocket. Nobody will ever see it. So I got it in there and then I brought my needles out um, to where I could get them even and everything. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the finished side with the other needle. Um, there's two needles on this thread. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull it all the way through. I pull it back to about the 7 o'clock position. And then I put the other needle in just in front of it. Once I've got both of those in there, I give it a nice little snug uh, pulling. I don't pull it super tight. I'm not trying to crinkle up the leather. I just want it good and snug. And then I start over again. Start with the finished side. Pull it back. Unfinished side needle pull it through and then I pull it snug and I try to pull it the exact same amount of tension every time and you'll have a prettier stitch running up there. So there we go. And now I'm just going to keep doing that over and over and um, next thing you know, it'll be done. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the, pause the uh, video again, and I'm going to um, sew up these two sides, and then we'll come back and uh, start putting the rest of the wallet together. Okay, so uh, while the video was paused, I went ahead and uh, finished sewing up the two side um, card pockets. And again, when we build the, the wallet here, Here's what we're going to do with these. Um, these two are going to be placed along the edges on this piece. And then this one's just going to be centered in between them. Just like that. So, 
what we have to do now is I'm going to finish the edges, uh, the side edges on the centerpiece because it's going to get sewn down. Um, and I want those edges to be nice and burnished. And then I'm going to glue up this entire thing. I'm going to glue the three sides of the side pockets and then all four sides of the, uh, the center pocket there. And then we'll um, sew a top line right here. And then during the final assembly of the wallet, or correction, we're gonna uh, uh, sew that top line. I'm also gonna sew down the two sides of this. And then during, excuse me, the final assembly of the wallet, when the backing of the wallet and everything is sewn to it, then that's when um, everything else is gonna get sewn together. So we are uh, well over halfway finished with our, our construction already. But what I need to do now is I need to finish the edges, the side edges on this piece right here. And uh, then I'm going to glue all of these together. All right. So um, real quick, I'm going to grab a, this is a uh, Ron's Tool um, Montana Edger. The Montana Edgers are meant for really, really thin leathers like this. This is only about two ounces. Um, and I'm just going to bevel very lightly. I mean, this thing barely has taken anything off at all. And I'm going to bevel that. And then I'll do the same thing on the other long side of it. There we go. I'm not worried about doing the back side because this is going to sew flat down to this piece here. Uh, let me grab my bronze edge rubs all the way over there. Um, it's a little difficult sometimes to burnish a uh, piece of leather that's so thin, but we'll be, uh, we'll be real careful with it. I'm just going to put some of this Ron's Edge rub on it. Just a very light coat right along the edge there. And I'm just going to lightly rub it with this canvas here. It won't take much at all because like you said, this is very, very thin leather. And I just want that to be nice, smooth. Um, smooth edge so when it gets sewn down it'll be finished. There we go. Okay, so now it's time to start uh, gluing all this up and what I'm going to do is I'm um, I'm going to go ahead and glue these two side pockets on first, just lining them up with uh, the top, the bottom, and then this edge. And then, of course, over here, the top, the bottom, and this edge, making sure I've got the right pockets on each side. You want the sewn lines on the inside of them to, 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 excuse me, to create the, the pockets there. Um, and then once we have that, we'll measure and center this piece right in between them. Okay. So give me a second to get some glue on this. Um, what I will do though, let me do that on camera so you can see. Um, as these are on here, I'm gonna take just the corner of my fingernail and I'm just gonna mark right under where the ends of these are because that's where my glue needs to stop. I don't wanna go any further with my glue than where it's gonna be covered up because then you'll just have glue on your project when it's done. And again, little details. So I just pressed in little marks right there in my leather, um, kind of right under those. Now we'll get some glue on this bad boy. Again, um, it doesn't take a lot. You're just kind of holding it on here uh, because it's all going to be sewn in the end.
Um, this glue brush, I know I've talked about it on other videos, but this glue brush has been trimmed down to where it's much shorter. Normally they come out to about there. Um, and it's been trimmed down and it sure does help. This was a little trick Peter Main taught me because it sure does help with keeping your glue from just getting slathered all over stuff it's not supposed to be on. So if you have a brush like this, you may want to take a sharp knife. And he just, Peter just put the glue brush down on the table, took a really sharp knife and pressed down and chopped all those bristles off and sure did work nice. So, all right, so there's the glue on that piece. Now I'm gonna uh, go ahead and put it on these two pieces. And again, I'm gonna do it only on three sides. You don't wanna glue down the side that you've already sewn. You just wanna glue down the other three sides. So I'm going to turn it over because the glue, of course, is going on the back of it. Do a little bit of smear work. And there we go. All right, and again, our glue sets up pretty quickly, so I'm just going to go ahead and stick these suckers together because they're fine. Let's pull my paper out of the way so I don't get glue all over everything. All right, so again, you got to keep keep in mind which uh, which side you're doing this on. Make sure all your cards are uh, pointing up. And I'm going to line this up right on the edges. Get my corners down, and then I'll just press it down, and I'll use my little roller tool. And the other side. going to have to get creative to get this sucker where it needs to be okay um, so what I do is um, I have a graph on this this little mat so I'm kind of using it to center it um, this gap is almost four inches wide so I'm kind of centering it on the four inch lines there and then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center, I'm going to hold it there and I'm going to take a stylus and just scribe very, very lightly a little line on each side of it. Um, then I'll pull it off, I'll glue the back side of it, I'll glue just inside those two lines and then I'll put it back on. So here we are, we're centered, we're perfectly parallel on this line and this line. So again, I'm going to take my little stylus here, very lightly scribe a line. All right, now a little bit more glue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue just inside both those lines, so towards the center of it, not on the outside. And then I'm gonna glue the bottom and the top. And then I'm gonna put glue on all four sides of the back of the card thing. I'm so sorry, the camera needs to be more down. You don't care about my face, you care about my project. Um, get my glue paper back. Coffee break. All right. Now 
once again, we don't want the glue to get into the Tyvek, so you got to be kind of careful with where you're laying it here. I'm staring clear of that little line I drew, because I also, once I press it down, I don't want that glue to seep out. Um, from under it. Um, if it does, usually if you're using a good contact cement, you can just wipe it off after it's dry. Don't try to wipe it off while it's wet. You're just going to smear it. After it's dry, you can kind of, it'll kind of roll and ball up as you uh, rub on it. And uh, that works better. I can't see what I'm doing here. Let me turn this thing around. dried up glue off the edge of my jar and it's not spreading very nicely. Alright, so there's that piece. We'll set it aside for a minute. And now we're going to do all four sides around the Tyvek on this side, on this uh, piece. Again, being very careful not to get the glue into the layers of Tyvek. You don't want to glue your pockets shut after you've worked so hard to build them. And your end customer definitely doesn't like that. Um, I will say this, after I'm done with every wallet, I put cards in every single slot just to make dang sure and I don't accidentally got glued shut or anything because It'd be awful embarrassing if I gave this wallet to somebody and then they called me and were like, well, it's really nice, but your nine card pocket, uh, your nine pocket wallet is actually just an eight pocket wallet with an extra cut in it. That would suck. All right. So once again, being careful, making sure, okay, the card slots are pointing up. So this one's card slots are going to point up. And I'm just going to lay this sucker right there in between my two drawn lines and that, uh, that the bottom and top there. Um, this is not a difficult task, but the funny thing and ironic thing is, I guess it's probably the hardest task of building this entire wallet is just putting in this one little pocket in the middle. Um, I decided not to make this pocket to where it had a pocket behind it um, just because then the wallet is going to get too thick and again um, you know that's one of our goals is not having a wallet that's so thick that it's it's bulky and doesn't set right okay now I do have some glue overage over here again I'm gonna wait until that dries and then I'm just gonna rub that off with my finger and it should ball right up and and, uh, and come off um, if it's down into the little corner there. I mean, I, you can even take a stylus and kind of drag across there. It, it'll pull that glue out. That's not a problem. But I'm going to do that after I sew everything together. So the next thing I have to do, I have to sew across the very top of this, and then I have to sew down the two sides of this. All right. So I will go ahead and draw or um, gouge out my stitch lines that I'm going to do across the top and then down the sides so that you can you can see it better. And again, I'm not going to start all the way at the end. I'm going to start about a quarter of an inch in or so. Um, where this is only one layer of leather, I'm not going to do any kind of gouging at all. Um, it's already pretty thin, being only like two to three ounces right there. So I'll just start again with my gouge right here. Skip the, the blank area again, and then I'll gouge out this area right here. All right. Um, oop, forgot. I'm going to do these areas. I'm going to sew down these sides. I might decrease my uh, measurement here just a little bit so that my stitch is closer to that edge. I'm 
going very slow because I would rather take an extra four or five seconds to gouge that little line than screw it up and have to throw this entire thing away because I can't pull that back off. That glue is already set up and it's not coming off without tearing up the leather that is. Okay, so there's what we look like, the lighter lines are my gouges. I'm going to sew all the way across that top, even though I didn't gouge those little areas where the leather's so thin. Um, I'm gonna sew all the way across the top, and then I'm gonna sew down each of those two lines. So when we come back, that's what'll have already been done. So give me a few, and I'll unpause the video again. Uh, really important, actually, while I was, um, Punching the holes for this, I, I, uh, I guess I could mention something that will help out a lot. Um, I started punching my holes right here, okay, at this where this fold is, and I worked my way back out to the edge. And then I started again on the, on the edge of this one, and I'm going to work my way to that edge. And then I'm going to start again, just be on this fold again, and work my way to that edge, okay? And that ensures that none of my pricking irons are going to go through that fold because um, then it'll cut that open and while structurally it's not going to hurt it or anything it's just another one of those little details that it'll look a lot nicer if you don't have a that busted out piece of leather right there so i'll go ahead and do this on camera So again, I'm going to stop right there, and then I'll just skip ahead to the next next area, and I'm going to just go, you know, just a little bit into where I know it's not going to bust out. I'm, I'm sorry, I know you can't see what I'm doing. Um, just a little bit in from that fold, so I know it's not going to bust out, and um, I'll start right there. So let me get my irons right here. The unfortunate part of making a video, it's either where I can see it good or where you can see it better. And uh, anyway. Okay. Now I'm going to go back with my two hole iron here. And I'm just going to start right at the edge of that fold and do the narrow or the, the, the slender part there where it's only one layer of leather. But I'm going to start right at the edge of that fold and go across that way. I really don't even need to hit these with the maul. Like these things are pretty sharp. I could just push them in. And again, on the other side, I will start right at the edge of the, uh, the fold and work my way towards that center piece there. And we may have one or two stitches that are just, I mean, a hair longer or shorter than the others, but that is much less noticeable than for that piece of leather to be torn at the edge of that fold that I was talking about. got an area there where it's too long to leave alone but too short to put another stitch in so I'm just going to take my awl and make up a stitch right there. And there. Alright, I'm going to pause the video again. All I'm going to do now is just I'm going to use my pricking iron to go down those two lines and then I'm going to hand sew it and when I come back it'll be done. Alrighty. So, got all those lines sewn up, and um, I'm use my stylus here and pick a little glue out of this. Like I said, there's a little bit there, so it dries pretty clear, but where it bubbles a little bit, it does need to come out because unprofessional.
Um, the next thing we're going to do, I, uh, as usual, I forgot to put my maker's mark on this, so I'm about to do that, my maker's stamp. Um, and then we're going to start putting, we're going to, we need to burnish this top edge right here, because if you look at your template sets, your wallet back is just a slightly taller than your wallet front, um, or the inside piece. Uh, that's by design. That's so that when you're holding it, it's easier to just take your hand and put money inside of it um, than if those two were flush. And then it also, like the tops of your cards and everything aren't exposed, right, even with the top of the wallet. Um, you, you don't want that, obviously, because somebody could pickpocket you. Um, so anyway, um, so what I need to do is I need to sand down this top edge just a little bit, get rid of the glue and stuff like that that's on there. And then we're going to uh, edge bevel it and burnish it. Let me get my soft board out of the way there. I have some sandpaper back here, but, but it's over there. Um, give me just a second. Sorry about that. All right, I need to find my sandpaper, so I'm gonna pause the video right now. Okay, couldn't find the piece I was using earlier, so I just went and got another piece out of the drawer. Um, this is 320 grit, and um, I just lightly sand these edges down. Um, it does help get rid of the glue that might have seeped out, and then of course it's also going to even up the edges just a little bit for when I go to, uh, to burnish them. You want them nice and even. Um, before you um, do your uh, edge beveler. And yeah. That edge wasn't as straight as I would like it to be, so I took a little extra sanding there. And I'm only worried about this top edge of this right now. Uh, once the entire wallet's put together, we'll worry about more edges but this one edge is going to be difficult to burnish once the wallet's put together because again that the wallet back is taller than this piece so we might as well just burnish it now while it's a little bit easier um trim off just a tiny bit right here where this is not even more reason scalpels come in handy. It'd be difficult to trim this little sliver of leather with a uh, with a bigger knife. All right. There are a couple of size different edges here. Um, I still have my number one here for that little space right there between the card pockets. But then I grabbed a uh, number three Montana Edger um, to do the tops of the card pockets. And it's not really big enough either. Um, I guess it's right. I almost thought I'd have to move to the floor. So where there's more than one thickness of leather, I'm using this number three. And then where there's only one thickness, I'll use the number one. And again, I'm just doing the top edge for now. And then the other thing I was thinking about while I was sewing, I uh, I forgot to put my maker's mark on there, so now I'm going to do it again before I get distracted again. I'm just lightly rubbing a tiny bit of, leather, of uh, water right there at the bottom. This English bridle doesn't accept water as well as uh, normal truly leather because it's been hot stuff with wax. 
but it'll definitely hold this stamp, so it'll be okay. Make sure I'm centered here. Nothing worse than having a maker's stamp that's not quite centered. Beautiful. All right, I'm going to get some brown dye, and I'm just going to run a dauber of uh, brown dye across that, and then I'm going to burnish it right away. Um, this is Phoebing's uh, dark brown um, dye. And I just take it and get a lot of it off this dauber because uh, I just want a little bead of it right across the top of that seam. Luckily, I'm not shaking too bad today. It's difficult on the shaky days. All right, and then when I do this, I see right here, I've got some more sanding to do. Um, because the dye didn't take, and I'm sorry it's blurry, but I know you, uh, I can see it on the, the, the computer there. I've got a little bit more sanding to do because the dye didn't take, which means there's glue right there. So give me just a second here to, to sand that just a little bit more. You can feel that glue rolling up under your sandpaper when it's coming off. All right, re-edge that real quick. And there we go. Now it's on there much better. Set my die aside so I don't knock it over. Grab my Ron's Edge rub again. And again, I'm just going to run just a little bead of Ron's Edge rub right across the top of that. And then I'll use my canvas and burnish it in. an edge I can be proud of. Um, sometimes the canvas leaves little stringies in it, so I'm just going to run this lighter real fast down along it, and that'll get rid of any of the fibers that the canvas left behind. Okay, so now we need to, um, just like on the billfold wallet, this is longer than this. So we're going to have to end up sewing it one section at a time, or gluing it one section at a time. We're going to sew it all at once. Um, but we need to punch some little holes right here because there's going to be gaps and spacings where this will um, not be directly sewn to the back of the wallet, this piece. All right. So I'm going to get me a little hole punch that's about the same size as the gap between those two pieces. And uh, cutting board back out. All right, one of these two is going to be the right size. It is this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to punch a half a hole. I'm not trying to punch the whole thing, just a half a hole. 
just like that. Okay, so now you can see where that gap is missing there. And that's exactly what I want. All right. So I have that at those, uh, those two areas there. That's at the bottom of the wallet. All right. Um, while I have this thing sitting flat on the table, I'm going to go ahead and use my stitch groover and go all the way around it because it's a heck of a lot more difficult once it is sewn to the, or uh, glued to the wallet and it's shaped like this. I'm going to do a pretty deep stitch groove on this. Uh, the outside of the wallet's a pretty high wear point because it's in your pocket all day. I'm back to whistling because I turned my radio off during the sewing break. All right, now, the other thing. The, these two pieces are only going to be sewn together on three sides, so the sides and the bottom. But I want my stitch to go all the way around the, um, the wallet back, just because it, it looks a lot nicer that way. So what I need to do is go ahead and put my holes through the, what I'm going to decide is the top of the wallet back. Um, I can't put those holes in it after it's all glued together because they're going to be below the level of this thing right here. Okay? And that way when the wallet is, is just sitting there, it looks a lot more nice and balanced. Like here's my demo wallet that I built real quick yesterday. When it's sitting there, I've only got stitching on two of the sides. I didn't bother doing it on this one because it was just a practice, you know, make sure the pattern was good. Um, and it just doesn't look as balanced and nice as if it had a stitch line up here to match the one down here. So, again, I'm going to go ahead and just put uh, stitching holes through that, that top layer there. And, um, yeah, so I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to watch that. I'm not going to sew it right now. I'm just going to put the holes in it. Okay. So um, I just took my, uh, my irons and I did, that's the top of the wallet. I just went ahead and did the uh, stitch line there. Now what we're going to do is start gluing this bad boy together. The easiest way that I've found to do this is I will glue this L shape right here from the top of this corner down to that corner down to the edge of that pocket. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the exact same thing and I'm going to glue it on both of those edges, I'm going to glue it um, aligned with the, the edges of the wallet back. So you'll have this giant gap in between. Okay, and then we'll take care of that gap in just a second. So let's go ahead and get some glue on this sucker. But this is this is the foolproof way to get your spacing um, get your spacing right. And I'll lay them together here so I can see where to stop my glue. My glue doesn't need to run past where that that, 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 that that hole punch is. And just like the rest of it, a little dab will do right up along the edge. You're not trying to glue this thing together forever. You're just trying to hold a good edge and um, and uh, make sure that it's, it's going to hold together while we hand stitch it. Or if you're using a machine, then use the machine.
All right, so there's the one side. And I could, uh, as a matter of fact, I will. I'll go ahead and let this set for just a second and I'll stick it together and it'll just be a little more easy to manage um, than trying to do both sides at the same time. Um, again, the purpose of all my videos is to show you the easiest way to get the best results. So I'm lining it up with the bottom corner here. I'm gonna press it together. There we go. Use my roller tool just for the fun of it. All right, now I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm gonna glue just down the edge and in a little bit, and then I'm gonna glue down um, this edge and in a little, into the, 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 where the hole is, and I'm gonna stick those two together. Better turn the glue paper over. I got plenty of glue on it. All right. Now I don't want to go past where that card pocket's going to stop, so I'm just going to stop right there with it. Drop my glue brush. The dropping the glue brush is optional. You don't have to do that, um, but I, it, it's practically a good luck charm. I mean, you might as well. And I just put my hand in glue. So yeah, there we go. We're uh, batting a thousand here towards we get towards the end of this build. Okay, give that little glue a couple of seconds to set up and uh, find somewhere to wet my hand. That'll be sticky all day, dang it. <laughs> all right, and then I'm gonna do the exact opposite thing. Um, I'm gonna pick it up so that I can get, a, get that extra space, you know, out of there. Um, and I'm gonna line up the end of the wallet. All right, then I'll just press it together. It is a little bit more difficult. One, because you're holding it up in the air and it's not flat. So I will put it down here and kind of create a fold. Press that side down. Press this side down. All right, there we are. Now, you have the big smile, okay? It's just big old smile and wallet now. So what I need to do to get rid of that gap is close the wallet. All right, you see how nicely everything's gonna lay flat once the wallet's closed, okay? So what I'm gonna do, right on the edge of the leather, I'm gonna take my pen and where those, the, the center card slot uh, uh, piece of the liner stops, I'm gonna make a little mark right on the very edge of the leather, okay? Not on the side, not on the front, not on the back, but right on that little edge because that'll be burnished over, so it'll be it'll be okay. We're gonna sand that off and burnish it over, okay? Now when I open this back up, now I know where to stop my glue. So I'm gonna glue that little section and I'm gonna glue just a little bit on the back of this. Then I'll fold it back up and press that all together and it'll be beautiful. Um, this wallet's best if it's made on a curve like that. If I just built the entire thing flat, then it wouldn't naturally fold closed. And when you did close it, it would have lots of wrinkles and stuff like that. So making it with the curve in it, again, you're going to have a nicer wallet. It's going to have a more professional result. And that's what we're all after is improving. I made lots of flat wallets before I figured this kind of stuff out.
Okay. Let that set for just a second. All right. One second has passed. Um, now I'm going to close the wallet again. I'm going to line all that back up like it was before, and I'm going to squeeze it together. You can see the glue spewing out. Perfect. Okay, now that I've done that, I'll open it up, and I'm not going to let these, these wings fold completely down because I don't want that glue to separate before it has time to set, and I'm going to use my roller tool here. There should be. All right, so now it's time to punch holes all the way around the rest of the wallet and hand sew it. Um, I'm gonna hand sew the entire thing in one whack. Um, when I get up here to the top, I'm just gonna sew just the top only. Um, you know, I'm not sewing the liner to it. And then when I get back down here to a side, I'm gonna keep on going. But my stitch, I'm going to have it, um, I'm gonna have my, uh, stitch begin and end probably back here on the back middle. Um, there's not really a pretty place to do it. Um, I, I don't like starting starting and stopping stitches in the corner because that's a high wear point. And I don't want it to start and stop up here on the top because that's a thinner uh, area right there and it'll be harder to hide that um, the, 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 the stitching splice. So um, since the wallet now has a natural curve to it, um, uh, I've got to be kind of inventive about how I do some of the stitching. We're done with our glue paper. So I've got to get creative. So one thing I'll do is when I'm going down these sides so that that natural curve can be there, I'll just hang it off the side of the bench. All right. And I'm just going to start going all the way around the wallet with my irons, making dang sure that they're going straight down into the wallet because if they're, if they're tilted back like this, then they're going to shoot right out the side and they're not going to get all that liner in there. Okay, and again, I, I realize that pricking irons are, um, you know, the, the purists will tell you that, oh, you don't go all the way through with them and this and that. And that's, that's awesome. I'm, I'm not arguing with them. I'm not saying they're wrong by any means because, man, there's some guys out there with some beautiful hand sewing. But my hand sewing is pretty dang good, and this is how I do it, so to each their own. There really are a million ways to skin a cat, or in this case, a cow. What I'm going to do on, on camera, I'm just going to go down to where to the point that I get around one of these curves just to kind of show you how I'm going to tackle that. And the funny thing is, is like I don't really know until I get there how I'm going to tackle it. I'll have to see where the stitches line up with it. But we'll figure it out together. That may be a point where I do just use the pricking iron to mark some holes and then I go back with an awl and individually poke those five or six holes that are going to go around that curve. Okay, so I'm there. I am at that point. And yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my two prong pricking iron and I'm just gonna kind of walk it around that and just barely make some indentations that I can go back with my awl and actually poke through because that curve is gonna be too great for um, trying to use the uh, irons all the way through it. All right. So here's my awl, and then somewhere around here I have a very small piece of rubber that I use for just such a thing so that I don't stab my fingers. So I'm going to wrap it around that piece of rubber right there. I'm going to make sure that my awl is at the correct angle to match the, uh, the pricking iron um, marks. And I'm going to stab it.
and the phone is already ringing today. I was hoping I'd get further along before it started. I started this video at 4.30 this morning. Alright, now I think I'm back in an area where I can just go straight across with my uh, my pricking irons. I'm going to use this pad now to kind of hold it up and off the, uh, the workbench. And I'll keep going with my 8 stitches per inch, 8 hole, uh, <clears throat> 8 prong chisel here. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna pause the video as I uh, do the rest of these holes and then I'm gonna start hand sewing. Uh, when I come back, it'll be sewn together and I'll have returned whoever that call is. All right, so uh, all the hand sewing is done on this uh, this billfold. It looks really pretty daggum good to me. Um, then I went outside and I went ahead and sanded down my edges real good to get all the glue gone and everything like that. Um, so what I'm going to do next, I'm going to use a regular bronze number two edger. And I'll just go around the entire perimeter of the wallet on front and back. And then I'll burnish my edges again. Um, not really a need to show that during the video just because we've already burnished some edges together. And uh, so, yeah. And looking at this, I may actually use a number three because... There's a couple of different pieces of leather there, so a number three might fit it a little better. But yeah, I'm going to dye all these edges dark brown and burnish them, and the wall will be complete. So, um, as usual, if, uh, if you have any questions or anything, leave them in the comments, and I'm more than happy to type in and put some answers out there for you. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this build. I'm really excited about the new template. Uh, the templates will be available at makersleathersupply.com. And, um, yeah, let us know how we can help you. Let us know what, uh, what videos you'd like to see in upcoming builds. And um, until then, keep on making it with makers. Have a great day.